Hi. How's it going? Oliver Carlin here. If you cannot avoid foreclosure, would you like to see how you can stay in your house up to a year without making any mortgage payments and save $24,000? Well, stay tuned. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back. So, how to live in your house for up to a year without paying any mortgage payments and be able to save $24,000 if you can't avoid a foreclosure, right? So how can you do that? How is that possible? Let me start from the beginning, okay? You're going to go through a foreclosure, right? It's coming. So what's going to happen is you have to be 120 days delinquent on your payments before the bank can initiate the foreclosure process. 120 days, that's four months, 30, 60, 90, 120, right? So four months already right from the get-go that you can live in your house before they actually start the foreclosure process. Now once they start the foreclosure process, you're going to have another approximately three and a half months before the actual sale of your house. Now, that those three and a half months can change state by state, so you'll, you'll need to verify you know, exactly how long that is with your state, but approximately three and a half months. Okay, so after you know, the sale of the house happens, or the auction, you'll typically have another month or two before you're actually required, they give you formal notice to vacate the property, right? So up to this point, you're at 120 days plus three and a half months plus another two months so that's four five six seven eight nine so you're about nine months right now already in this property before you actually have to vacate now I want to get you three more months okay so the tricky little sneaky thing you can do next is right before the actual foreclosure sale I'm talking like a day or two before you're gonna go ahead and and initiate the bankruptcy chapter 7 bankruptcy process okay now make sure you you know you figure out everything you know before a day or two before get everything going but right when the two couple days before that's when you're gonna initiate the bankruptcy what that does is it stops the foreclosure in its tracks immediately when you, as soon as you initiate, even if it was one minute before the sale of the house, if it was officially initiated the bankruptcy, the foreclosures in it, it stopped, and you have another three months in that house. So there you go, one year in that house before you actually had to move for the foreclosure process. Right now, what I want to throw in here is, you may be thinking, well, I don't want to do bankruptcy. I just, I just. I'm going to do the foreclosure only. I don't recommend that. Now, again, I'm not a lawyer or real estate advisor or whatever. You know, I'm just giving you my opinion on the subject, okay? But I wouldn't recommend doing a foreclosure without a bankruptcy because you're you're just worried about your credit score, right? Your credit score is already going to be demolished with the foreclosure, okay? So. By filing a bankruptcy on top of a foreclosure, you're not going to see too much of a difference. If you if you get what I'm saying, you're already going to have a horrible credit. It's not going to really impact you any more than it already is with the foreclosure. But the advantage of doing the foreclosure, I mean the bankruptcy, Chapter Seven bankruptcy, is going to wipe out all other debt that you have. So if you have second and third liens on the house, if you have credit card debt, if you have anything that's unsecured. Now the second liens will be unsecured if you end up selling the house for less than it's covered by the first mortgage, right? So that essentially would be wiped out too. So everything gets kind of wiped clean. Your slate's wiped clean. I mean, why would you not want that? Now the, the another advantage of it is you can stop paying. Now what I wanted to say was, so after a year ago when you first started this foreclosure process, you could have stopped paying all your mortgage payments. Right? So you, you already pocketed, if it was $2,000 a month rent, $2,000 a month rent, you just pocketed $24,000 in a year off of mortgage payments. But if you did a bankruptcy as well, then you could have been pocketing 
all of those other fees that you're paying every month to those those people. So you're pocketing all this money. Now, one caveat here is before you file the bankruptcy, you need to check with your state and see what the exemptions are. Because every state's different on how much money they're going to allow you to have in your savings account when you file bankruptcy. Everything after you file the bankruptcy is off limits, but everything up to the point of when you file the bankruptcy is uh, going to count towards your ex exceptions for the bankruptcy. So you may have $25,000, you may only have $5,000 for your state. So that, that would play another factor too in you filing your bankruptcy because if you're going to lose all your $24,000 in mortgage that you just saved up for the year to bankruptcy, I mean, was it really worth it? Worth it. So you're going to have to weigh those things out on your own. But depending on what state you're on, the state you live in, you could be saving up to $24,000 and living in your house for a, a year without making any mortgage payments. Now, the, the advantage of that, because your credit's going to be kind of jacked up after this, so by you being able to put away that little nest egg, that's going to help you to be able to find a place to live in once you move out of this house that you're being foreclosed on. Because it's going to be harder for you, you know, to find a place to stay in because your credit's not as good anymore. Now one thing I do want to say, when they go to evict you in the last two months, when you get that formal written notice to vacate, don't, once they tell you to vacate, just vacate. You don't want to them to evict you because if they do evict you, that's going to make it even harder for you to find a place to live and to rent because those are things that renters, um, landlords are going to look at is if you were ever in an eviction or something like that because they don't want to deal with that. So make sure you move out. That'll make it easier for you there. But there you have it. Okay, so you're able to stay up in your house for a year, rent free, mortgage payment free, and save $24,000. Now, if you don't want to go through the foreclosure process, and you still think you would like to try to avoid the foreclosure process, then go ahead, there's a link below this video, make sure you click the link to go to my blog post where I reveal 13 secrets to avoiding foreclosure and saving your, your credit score. Well, that's all I have for you, so if you did get value from this, I just ask you to share it, share it with other people. If you have any questions, comment, I'd love to hear what you have to say. But other than that, Take care, I wish you the best of luck, and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, have a great day.